All right, so now we are going to start looking at the nuclear atom. So we looked at a regular atom, we saw the isotopes, we saw the ions, and we looked at the electrons. Now we're going to go a little bit further into isotopes or the nuclear atom. So Baccarat, another scientist, he and the Curies discovered uranium. And they discovered that it emitted high, high energy particles, which suggested that the existence of subatomic particles, remember? Like, this is one of their proofs. Yeah, there's more. So Marie Curie, awesome lady, she termed the, um, the word radioactivity. And she is the one who discovered radium and polonium. Her and her husband. <clears throat> All right, so in the nucleus, we found through Rutherford, his experiment, that there was a dense nuclear charge in the middle. Like there's a dense uh, nucleus in the middle of an atom. And in these, there are these things called quarks. Um, we're not going to go into quarks. We're not going to go further into quarks. But just know that there are a little bit farther. They, they've analyzed and figured out there's things called quarks. <clears throat> but we have these things, these forces, these forces between um, our lovely little atoms. First, you have gravitational. This is between two masses. You've got weak nuclear. These are between quarks. Um, it keeps the protons and neutrons intact. So in other words, it is basically saying that um, a neutron is actually a proton with an electron stuck on it. Like that that keeps that that makes a neutron because that makes it neutral. Okay. So then you have electrostatic. These are between charged particles which hold the electrons in the atom. That that keeps them in that sphere outside. Then you have strong nuclear. This is the glue. This is between the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus. They It overcomes the electrostatic repulsion between protons. Because remember, plus and plus are not going to, they're going to want to go against each other. And it acts over a short and close range. That's why just the middle, the protons and neutrons are together. And the electrons stay out. <clears throat> So we have stability, nuclear stability. So this is definitely dependent on the size of the atom. For so small nuclear uh, nuclei, the strong force is very, very effective. It, it can keep everything together. But as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, that strong force kind of loses, loses its force. And when the, <clears throat> the radius of the nucleus ex exceeds a certain range, um, making that strong force effective, the nucleus disintegrates to become smaller. It separates. And so this is dependent on the neutron-proton ratio. For small atoms, up to 20, you have a one-to-one. -one. That is like the best. One neutron, one proton. That is the best, most stable thing. Normally, stable elements are light, and heavy isotopes are unstable. Making sense? For example, carbon-12, 6 and 6. It, that's wicked stable, but carbon-14, yeah, it's not. Um, for our heavier elements, there is a 1, uh, one to 5 to 1 ratio, which is needed. Or 1.5 to 1 ratio needed. And you can see right here, as you go up, you need a better ratio to stay very, very stable. There's that one to one, and once it hits 20, it's gone. Then you need the one and a half to one. Or one and a half to five, sorry, my bad. Okay, so we have this thing called transmutation. This is, um, it, to decay a nucleus, it will either emit or give off a proton, or emit or give off a neutron. Um, it's doing this to change its size or to convert a proton to a neutron or vice versa to correct that ratio, to get try and get that one-to-one -one or whatever ratio it is, depending on the size. In either case, the number of protons in the nucleus changes. If you change the protons, you change the element. Okay? This process is called transmutation. So when we, like, dispel stuff, 
and we have more protons, it's a transmutation. When unstable nuclei do this on their own to achieve stability, it is called natural transmutation. So it can naturally occur. That's how we get carbon-14. Transmutation can also be achieved by striking a nucleus with a high-speed particle. Disturbance of the nucleus is often a result in a nuclear change. This is called artificial transmutation. We're going to go over this a little bit later. <clears throat> so here's a new look at protons and neutrons. A neutron is a proton with an electron taped to it on its back, just like I showed right here. Proton with a little electron right on there. A proton, it's a little bit more mysterious, is a neutron with a positive attached. Not too sure how to show you guys that, but that is what's going on. Essentially, a neutron could be Come a proton by ejecting that electron part, or a proton could become a neutron by either ejecting its positive or fusing with an, an electron. I know that's a lot, right? It's okay, we can get this. All right, so common radiations. We have these common radiations. We've got alpha, beta, and gamma. <clears throat> which you can find table O right there. All right, so alpha. We've already talked about alpha a little bit. This is what um, Rutherford used in his experiment on an alpha particle. An alpha particle is a helium particle. So they shoot that. Um, it's a mass of four. See right there? Four has a charge of plus two. Its penetrating power is very, very low. It is stopped. If I went like this, it would stop it right there. That's also why they had that sheet up. And then we have this beta particle. So alpha is positive. Beta, if you guessed it, is negative. Um, it is an electron. A beta is um, almost zero. Remember, electrons aren't exactly zero, but they're almost zero. Net charge, minus one. And it's got a moderate uh, stopping power or penetrating power. So if I had a book, which I don't. Okay, so I kind of have a book. If I put this up, my nice little book, it could stop it. All right. And then we have the gamma. The gamma is bad. Gamma is definitely just the gamma symbol. There's no mass. There's no charge. Its penetrating power is very, very high. It is stopped by lead or a concrete wall. So this stuff is the more dangerous stuff. Okay, so then we have a neutron, N. Symbol is an N. Um, it's got a mass of one, no charge. Got a proton. It's either a P or a hydrogen. So hydrogen has a mass of one. Proton has a mass of one. It has a charge of plus one. And then we have a positron. This is a positive electron. I know, weird, right? So this is a mass of zero with a charge of plus one. And again, table O right there. Um, these radiation um, are radiation particles, and you don't need to memorize them. Again, table one. All right, so that's it for right now. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I hope you guys have a great day.